Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. And as promised, we're gonna take Susie out for a drive. If you guys were watching the video uh, where I put in the new carburetor, we know it runs really good, but I haven't actually road tested her. So now it's time to do the road test, as promised. Uh, only a couple things to do, we gotta disconnect that, you know, extension cord right behind me. And we're just gonna hit the road. Uh, oh, I gotta take the solar panel off the roof too. Um, I think that's about it. And just, just a regular checkup, check the tires and all that good stuff. But let's go for a ride and see if all that work putting in that Chineseium carburetor was actually worth it. Okay, oil is good. Everything is ready to go. All I need to do now, oh, I, I want to, oh, I won't be able to. I wanted to show you guys my backup camera while I back out of here, but I only have the doghouse in here kind of temporarily because in case I got to go back in there for final adjustments I didn't want to put all of the fancy trim and the cup holders and everything else so um, I won't be able to show you that but hopefully it starts right up so I'm gonna give her some choke here and not bad at all she sounds good a little bit of removing the choke, see, Jeez. like look at that idle, 700 RPM, she's just happy, so here we go, close the door here, maiden voyage with the new carburetor, oh that's not right, My foot's going right to the floor, guys. Oh, come on. What is... You gotta be kidding me. I, like, look, I got... I got no brakes. Oh, I guess it's a good thing I got my camera rolling. Anyways, let's go check to see if maybe it's just low fluid. Master cylinder's over here. Let's see if we got anything in here. Oh, that's tight. Well, multi-tool to the rescue. Okay. I gotta take it all the way off, I guess. Oh, no way. I got nothing in the back, so I got... Plenty of food in the front. A little dark, but oh, what is happening here? Well, I guess on a positive note, she's running really smooth. But uh, if I got no fluid in the back, I mean, look at this too. Nice, no smoke. Um, oh. I'm not sure if you can see it in the camera, guys, but I think I found it. I'm gonna try and zoom in for you. That wheel, yeah, it's hard to tell on the camera, but that wheel's wet. There's definitely some fluid, probably coming from the cylinder, the slave cylinder. Ugh. All right, well, I guess I gotta have to park it. Um, let's park it in the carport I guess and at least I'll have something more solid to work on I gotta take that wheel off now okay so we're parked into the carport uh, I've got the wheel off and I was looking for let's say like a smoking gun or evidence of a leak and I found it on the inside of the tire over here so it's definitely wet you can see some oil was dripping down um, so definitely got a problem so Let's take a look at it, and luckily, I got my dad helping me out today because I've never done a brake job on the back of one of these things, so I wasn't even really sure. Uh, but then he told me what we need to do now is I gotta remove this cap, which is gonna make a mess because I've got some oil in there. And then once I've got that off, the actual drum should fall out. Well, probably with the persuasion of a knockometer, but uh, okay. Stay tuned. 
I will uh, take this off, see how it goes. Well, we got everything loose, a little bit of uh, knockometer on this, and the oil is now coming out. And the oil needed a change. It's pretty dark. Uh, so if anything, if you look at this, like it's it's got it's got lots of use, so it'll be it'll be helpful to change that. Then we're gonna take off the cover here. That's the axle. Axles looking good. And, oh, thanks, Dad. All the way out. Oh, look at that. Okay, beautiful. And then we'll keep this under here so that we don't make a mess. And then move on to the next step. Now the next step is going to be to remove the locks. So we got a couple of retainer clips here, which is odd because none of them is ac are actually locked. They're all just kind of hanging there. They usually fall into these. And then we're going to tap this out, you know, backwards, counterclockwise, lefty tighty, righty tighty, lefty loosey, <laughs> all the way out, and then that should loosen up the drum. So let's get that done. Okay, so after we removed all the clips and the, there's two nuts in there, which are not super tight, but they are locked. Uh, there's the bearing here, and that bearing is going to stay there until we pull the drum. The drum is now loose, just like this. So. I'm assuming it's quite heavy, so I'm going to try and kind of control the fall here into my pail and not make a mess, but I'm going to support the weight close to my body using body mechanics and watching my fingers. Uh, yeah, okay, that's pretty heavy, but I work out, so I'm good. <sighs> oh, yeah, that's, that's heavy, Dad. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, okay, so that's good. And yeah, if you're gonna do this on your uh, on your nice stone driveway, get some cardboard because you tend to make a mess. Um, and now, here we have it. We've got all the guts in here. So that's how you take the drum off of a 1978 dually. Didn't know that before. Thanks, Dad. And I need to figure out where the leak's coming from, and it looks to be right here. That slave cylinder is wet, and it's dripping right down. So. I guess we're going to be buying another one of those, replacing it. The brakes are in great shape, though. They don't have a whole bunch of wear. Lots of material left. So we're going to probably just clean that up. And, uh, yeah, once we get a new cylinder in place, we'll be good. So, yes, I know I do promise that we're going to go for a ride. I know this is, this is kind of something I didn't expect, but we're going to go for a ride. I'm going to go check that carburetor out. Skipping forward a little bit here, guys. This is where we're standing at the moment. So I removed the backing plate after removing all of the brakes. And by the way, I highly recommend, and I mean highly recommend when it comes to these drum brakes, snap a few pictures because you're going to need to remember where all those springs go when you put it back together. So that's what I did. And I'm hoping that that'll help me. Uh, I ended up breaking off the line because I couldn't remove it from here because in the backing plate everything is bolted to the backing plate it's just there's no room to get to this particular fitting and it's just right now it's it's stuck in there so it's going to cost me another line but no big deal because the line's kind of rusty anyways I'm going to have to deal with the other end which is still on the uh, the axle but that's coming up all right guys so it is the next day and it is super windy out right now um might get a thunderstorm here from the sounds of it so where did we leave off well i mean i ended up putting a new cylinder in place uh and i'm gonna post the pictures that i took of all of these springs right now on the on the video and if you guys want you can take a moment pause the video just to see where all of them are located. And the one thing I am gonna point out too is I struggled with these two springs, one of them on this side and one of them on the other side holding the shoes in place. And I found out why. That's because the cups are actually slightly different. This one's a little bit dished deeper than this one. Uh, so it's something to note. But uh, yeah, it's a good idea to take a picture because there's a lot going on when it comes to the springs in here. So. What we're going to do next is we're going to put the uh, drum back in place, put the bearing, uh, set the uh, tension on that bearing as well, 
but I also, since I was looking at the fluid being so dark, I'm gonna just go underneath there, I'm gonna put a drain pan, and we're gonna give this thing, this old diff, an oil change. So maybe we should do that next before we do too much. Uh, and then it's gonna be bleeding. Uh, nothing really fun about this so far. I'd rather be driving, but this is what we have to do. Maintain the old girl here, so. Okay guys, so we are underneath the machine here under Susie. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take I'm skipping a little bit because I thought of this after. While we're working on the brakes, I can let this drip and ensure that we have a good oil change. Uh, we're going to take our old 16 wrench here and we're going to make sure that the fill port is loose and we can crack it loose because there would be nothing worse than finding out that we can't actually open up the fill port and take this cover off, right? So we're going to crack that free first and then we're going to loosen up the bolts Take a little screwdriver, break the seal free, and then just kind of let it drip. And hopefully my pan is big enough because if it's not, well, I'm going to make a mess. But I already looked this up. It takes about two and a half liters. So I think this quart, I think this will hold like four liters. So I should be okay. Come on. There we go. Well, that's good. That comes free. I'm happy to see that. Now we can break all these free and start draining. Ooh, that's been in there for a long time. Feels good doing this. Well, it doesn't smell burnt, so that's a good thing. So we're all buttoned up down here. I managed to drain out all the oil, which as you saw was pretty darn nasty. Um, and I took a minute to clean up the cover, give it a coat of paint, nothing too serious, um, but as you can tell I've put an excessive amount of sealant around the edge, but I don't want any leaks, so, and I'm not ever going to see this again. Do you need to put this much? Probably not, but hey, it doesn't matter. But one thing I do want to do before I go ahead and start putting some oil, and by the way, just, just 80 90 in here is what it's going to take, and then once the oil starts to pour out the fill port, that's it, that's all I'm going to do. Cap it up with a clean cap. Uh, but what I want to do before I go too far is this right here is a vent line. So I'm going to remove it from the differential here and I'm going to take my air gun right over here and I'm just going to blow through it. Uh, and the reason I want to do that is because if there's any dirt or let's say like a bug has made a nest at the end of that and it's not venting, as these gears rotate inside, they create pressure. And that pressure, if it builds to a point where it's got a vent somewhere, well, it's going to either leak out one of these seals here that we just put in, or a wheel axle seal. And that's going to puke oil all in, into your drums, and that's just not a good idea. So take the extra minute, take this line up. Finally, we can start bleeding the system. Uh, so. Clearly I, went, I ran out of fluid in the back and these are separate because it's a safety feature. So if you lose brakes on one end of the vehicle, you still have brakes at the other, which is kind of good because it allowed me to park it where it is without crashing into the garage. But look at the sediment in the bottom of this. This is pretty nasty. I mean, it's like 40 year old fluid, I get it. So I'm gonna make sure that the fluid that comes out the line is nice and clear so we're going to clean this all up nice and clean and it might be worth doing this one as well uh, it's not as dirty i've already cleaned out i sucked it out once before cleaned it and then put some fresh fluid in but as you can tell it's already starting to get dark but you can still see through it but yeah probably worth doing it again we're just about ready to bleed my dad's got this all nice and clean for me and uh look at the difference between the colors so i really got to do something with the front but and a couple little facts about uh, brake fluid. Uh, one of them is it's hydroscopic. But what that means is the moisture in the air will actually get absorbed in the fluid. So you should always make sure you've got a cap on the fluid when you're done. And the other thing is, is you don't want to pour that all over the place because if you pour it on any paint surfaces or painted or even plastic, it'll ruin it. So just be very careful with that. But let me show you the contraption I've got 
back here because we've got quite a length of hose and if we were to do it the old traditional way with the pump and bleed it would take a while so I'm hoping this is going to work borrowed this tool from work which is a mighty vac so what it's going to do is I'm going to create a vacuum I got the other line set up on the bleeder the bleeder's open right now and if I start pumping this on vacuum I'm on vacuum yeah it should pull fluid see I'm already starting the vacuum right here it should eventually start pulling fluid through the line and then when I'm happy and the fluid is clear I'll be able to tighten up the bleeder screw and then I'm going to finish that whole bleeding system uh, with a traditional method on the pedal to make sure that it's nice and firm. But hopefully this works. If it doesn't work, well, I'm going to have to go the other way. But uh, yeah. All right, so we actually got this working. It took me a while to figure it out, guys, but what I did wrong is I had this side actually open and the other side open. So when I was trying to create vacuum, I was just sucking air through the line from one side of the axle to the other. But as you can tell now, I'm pulling fluid and it's pretty darn nasty. Uh, so I'm happy that we're doing this and I'm gonna keep doing this until the fluid comes out nice and clear. And like I said, we're gonna do the traditional, you know, pedal open close method. All right, guys, I have yet another development here that is kind of slowing things down, but don't worry, I'm going to explain it all. The bleeding did not go well. It's another day. I tried bleeding the other side, as you saw. It's actually pulling some fluid. It's dark, but it's getting clear. But this side, this is the driver's side, I couldn't get any fluid to get through that slave cylinder or through the bleeding uh, port. And now I'm starting to think that the, either the line or the cylinder, the wheel cylinder is just frozen. So I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm going to replace those two items on this side as well. New line, new cylinder. And in the next scene, we're going to be driving it away because I think it's enough for this brake work. I promised you guys a ride. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to just fast forward to that and I will have done all the other work magically behind the scenes. All right, I know, it's, we're not on the road yet. I promise this is the last time I do another shot before we move on, but I decided to do a quick one check over, well, it's echoey in here, uh, to make sure that I had run properly, and it turns out I did not. I made a mistake. So these two lines here, I had to actually cross. So uh, the one that has the rigid line on it, that is actually my vacuum advance. I had it uh, connected to manifold vacuum and I had the other one connected to ported. So I switched those up uh, and while I was at it, I double checked the timing, which is why I have my timing light out. So I've adjusted it uh, to base timing of about 12 degrees and I've got a total timing of about 30 something. I forget exactly, but it should run really nice. It's actually quite snappy. It was already snappy, um, but you, I like to run my vacuum advance on ported, not manifold. This is probably going to cause a discussion, but anyways, let's hit the road. All right, guys, the moment we've all been waiting for, we are going for a ride. This is going to happen. I got brake pressure. After all that work, she fires right up. Let's back out of here. This is always the worst backing out. Here we go, drive. Oh, at least you didn't stumble. First impressions are good, so let's gonna let's gonna go find out what it's like to get it out onto the secondaries because I haven't quite done that yet. We're gonna find an open spot with less cars here. Somehow I ended up having to pick the busiest street. All right, so we got a bit of a stretch. Let's see what happens. That was a little bit disappointing. It's there, but it's not like the Quadrajet. So the Quadrajet, you'd feel it more. It 
it's climbing, but it's it's pretty slow. It feels great, but it's pretty slow. The quadrajet really maybe there's an adjustment I need to check out. I think it's downshifting. But maybe that's the issue. I don't know. I know my timing is set to the ported. I know it's uh, advancing. I was able to check that with the timing light. All that looks pretty good. Um, now, talking with some people, some say that you're not supposed to feel the secondaries kick in. Uh, we're feeling it, but it's supposed to be very transitional. Um, so maybe that's how it is. But it runs really good. I was just so used to the other one where I would hit the pedal and I couldn't even get any of that. It would stutter, it would stumble, get after fires like popping back. It was quite unreal. This, this I could drive all day. Okay, so we've got a highway where we got a little bit more speed now and maybe because the secondaries may have been a little bit empty. It's, much, it's better, it's getting better. So we're, we're holding speed, no problem here on the primaries. It's shifting fine. It's just overall a comfortable vehicle. The extra weight's nice. And that's one thing maybe I should keep in mind is that it's quite a heavy vehicle and it may have to jet it accordingly. So we're gonna go drive it a bunch, see what it's like. Uh, I never did do a fuel economy check with the old carburetor, but one thing I can do is I know approximately the mileage I used to go to camp or to my, our camping spot religiously, so I know how much it took to do that. So I can base that mileage and then do the same run and see how much gas we take then to see if it's any better or any worse. I would hope it's better though. So anyways guys, We've done it. We went through a couple of hurdles to get here. We got a car passing by, probably making it hard for me to talk. Um, so the brakes feel great. This carburetor feels great, first impressions. I'm gonna keep you guys updated on that. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, maybe drop a like. If you really, really do enjoy this video, please consider subscribing, it would help me a whole bunch. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching. You guys are awesome. This is why you always watch the video to the end. And I'll show you why. Because last night, laying in bed thinking, eh, there's something not quite right with this. It felt much better on the secondaries with the old carburetor, which shouldn't be quite right. Well, let me show you why. Under the dash, attached to the throttle pedal, is a kickdown switch. And there's going to be two wires connected to this. And on this one happens to be a Turbo 400. There's a pink and an orange. The pink will have, with key on, will have 12 volts, which I've tested, which it has. And now I'm going to check for continuity between the switch. So if I depress the throttle pedal all the way to the floor to kick it down. Sorry, guys, my light is probably blinding you. And if I depress the pedal all the way to the floor, this is what I get. I got no continuity. However, if I do it manually, a little bit further, there it is. So that means all I need to do is make an adjustment so that my kick down switch activates and that should make this thing liven up and make it run like it used to. Then we'll take another drive in the next video.